So today we're going to be talking about reward-based training. What is it? How do you use reward-based training to get your dog to listen to you? And I really want to encourage you guys to comment, share um, this Facebook Live, you know, let it go viral or um, let it get out there because a lot of people don't know about reward-based training or they do and they have a lot of myths about it that we want to bust today and help you guys realize how effective it can be. And the only way that we can help people is if we share this and we also comment, right? Because if we comment, then I can interact with you one-on-one. -on -one. So I definitely want you to share this video with others and to comment, 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 comment. Um, forgot to add one slide in here that I wanted to have in here. Um, and there are, so I'll just stop the screen share for a moment. There are, there's a link below pinned in the comments at the top. Um, and I'll talk about it again at the end of our live today, but I'm going to be doing a lot of free, um, in-person workshops up at the Burton library. Yay. Um, next Tuesdays on come getting your dog to come the positive way. Um, then it shifts to Thursday the following week, and that one is on loose leash walking. And then uh, the week after that um, is on preventing um, puppy biting and learning about your the reasons why your puppy is biting to help stop that mouthing. Um, so all of those are up at the Burton Library. You can you can click um, in the link pinned at in the comments below, and that link will take you to the one that's next week on getting your dog to come to you. And if you want to go to a different program, um, you can search in the Burton Library and um, figure out, you know, which ones you guys want to come to. I would love, love, love to see you there. So I wanted to start off today by sharing a story with you. Oh, great. We have people here. This is wonderful. Um, if you're willing, I would love to include you in the call today. Um, let me know um, your name and say hello. And I will be asking you guys questions today. And I would love for you to participate because um, that participating allows us to have a conversation. It allows me to make sure that I'm communicating clearly so that you understand what I'm teaching you. And it also allows me to help you personally. Um, so you can get personalized one-on-one -on -one help. Um, so yes, type your name below and say hello so I know who you are. So I'm going to start off with a story. Um, and, you know, this is all about reward-based training, right? So we all start somewhere. So guess what, guys? I'm a crossover trainer. Who knows what a cross-owner over trainer is? Comment below yes or no. I would love for you to participate and let me know if you know what a crossover trainer is. Um, so that basically means I started off being more on the, uh, I would say I was a balanced trainer. I did punishment and reward based or positive reinforcement. Um, and now I shifted over to doing strictly um, positive reinforcement or, or reward based training because this is me and a cute. That was when I was really young. I was about I don't know, around eight or so, I joined Dog 4-H in Ohio, and this is my cute dog, Heather, my first dog that I had, um, and I did a lot of the punishment-based training. Um, when she didn't come to me, I yelled at her, and I actually destroyed the come command. <laughs> um, my second dog, Shadow, um, oh, I used an invisible fence on her and I created aggression problems and she ran through the invisible fence and actually bit somebody. So you're going to kind of learn a little bit today about what ends up happening when you don't use reward-based training, right? So when you go on that more negative side, you definitely have a lot of side effects that end up happening from that. And you want to, you know, learn a different way. Okay, so what motivators have you used to get your dog to listen to you? I would love to know what motivators you guys have used. I'm looking in the comments. Please comment below and let me know. Positive, negative, punishment, um, whatever methods you've used. Let me know what you've used to motivate your dog. Um, and if you comment, then you and I can, you know, really give you a lot of value today. So. Here are some pain-based methods of training shot callers, including the invisible fence, 
um, beeping, vibrating colors. If you do have a deaf dog and you counter condition the vibration, which means you turn on the vibration, you paired it with treats, you can make the vibrating color be positive. And I do use that um, with deaf dogs. But if you haven't done that, most dogs will perceive that as negative. Um, prong collars, choke collars, spray bottles, yelling and hitting. These are all pain-based methods of training. And what determines if a motivator is pain-based? Who knows? Would love for you guys. I got so many people that are coming on and I got crickets with response. Um, I can't make you guys talk, but if you do, um, I can make this a lot more fun and we can have a lot more connection and I can even help you with the struggles that you're having um, with your dog. So that's just my request to you is to start chatting. Um, Okay, so I guess I will answer the question in my mind, right? Because there could be a lot of different answers, um, but generally it's something that's gonna instill fear or anger, right? So a shot caller, the dog's not gonna wanna run through the fence because they feel scared, right? Same thing with the beeping noise. Beep! Who jumped when, when I said that? Probably most of you, you triggered the nervous system. So a lot of people will be like, well, that's not you know, punishment-based training. It's just a beep, uh, yeah, it is. Beep! You know, that's a sudden noise. It's going to jolt your nervous system. So it basically is something that will probably produce cortisol in the body, um, uh, fire off your adrenals, um, and cause stress in the system. And when they're used long-term wise, um, you do cause a lot of um, stress in, in the dog's uh, system for sure. So the side effects of pain-based or positive punishment would be um, fighting, right? So like with Shadow, with the example I gave with the invisible fence, she got shocked. So then she went into fight mode and ran through the visible fence and then bit the mailman. So she associated the mailman with the shock, um, got angry and then bit him. Flight, um, that would be a good example with Heather when I yelled at her for not coming to me as a kid. Um, she eventually did fight, flight or freeze. Um, she would go the other direction or freeze and not want to respond because you're basically jolting the nervous system. And then full around, that would be like displacement signs or true Rodriguez would call those um, calming signals. And they're signs that you do when you're a little bit stressed out um, or a lot, and you're trying to release that stress. So in the dog world, that would be like yawning, scratching, sniffing. Shaky, shake, doing a shake off. So if you ever chain your dog and ask them to do something, they just they shake um, for a few seconds. That's some kind of releasing um, some stress. So these can be still displayed even when you're doing positive reinforcement. But if you're seeing a lot of them, and if you're doing pain based punishment, then you want to, you know, ask yourself, is that really what I want to create um, with me and my dog? So. All right, let's see if we can get some people talking here. Have you used pain-based or punishment-based methods? We would love to hear right now or when you're watching the replay, yes or no. Um, for me, obviously it's a yes, right? And if you have in the past, there's no need to punish yourself with fretting, okay? So a lot of like, oh, you know, and I've had a lot of people, gosh, I had 10 people on here and they all popped off. They all just bleed right away. And maybe they're feeling a lot of fear around learning about punishment. I don't know. I have no idea why. Um, but there's no need to fret yourself, dudes. It's really not the end of the world. Um, just have compassion and forgive yourself. You are doing the best you could do with the knowledge you knew at that time. And today you can learn another way. And that's what my goal is, is to help you guys um, connect and learn a different way. So what is your idea of reward-based training? I would love to know for those of you who um, are you know, popping on or watching the replay, what is your idea of reward-based training? So I taught this seminar yesterday at the Burton Library and a lot of people said, giving treats for doing a behavior that we like. Well, 
That definitely is one facet of reward-based training. Absolutely. But it goes way, way deeper than that. What are some ways to motivate your dog positively? So yes, treats. I think most people know that. Praise. I think a lot of people think about that. Um, a lot of people don't think about play and touch, petting, massage. Um, and there's like a billion answers to this, actually. And you'll see today um, as I go through, hi, happy to have you on. Go ahead and comment your name below so we can chat. Um, there's a billion of, if not more, you know, maybe an infinite number of ways to motivate your dog positively. But these are just like common things that I think a lot of us um, may do. Um, and not always think about, well, this is a way that I could actually reward my dog. Um, and play, you know, that's a really good one like that I use a lot, especially when a dog has a strong polar on the leash. Um, if I can reward them for a loose leash through tug or go sniff or even just changing and walking in different patterns. So I'm walking this way, then that way, do, 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 doing all sorts of um changing things up so it makes it fun, keeps that engagement and rewards that loose leash. And petting and massage and touch. So if I have a dog that's really reactive, I might call them to me off of whatever they're barking at and then do some T-touch or some type of massage. And that calms down the nervous system and the dogs, they really, really jive in that. They really, really want it. And they're feeling that. And so then they're in a space where they're craving to feel more of that relaxation, right? So then that is a wonderful way to um, reward behavior, especially if you're dealing with a fearful or aggressive dog. All right, so who's heard of clicker training on here? Anybody? Comment yes or no. And remember, my request is for you to participate because it makes it more fun for me, but also for you. And then I can really help you a lot more um, with your participation. So definitely comment if you've heard of clicker training. And what is a clicker? And what is clicker training? It's basically a noise um, that marks a behavior. I have one over here that I can show you live too. So it looks like this, this is a box clicker. They make eye clicks in different kinds, but I think the box clicker is the most common one. And the one a lot of people do is they wanna click right here where, because there's that little circle and that's not where you click, you actually click on the tip. So you're gonna put your thumb up there to click. And it makes that nice, crisp clicking noise. So clicker training is a way to mark a behavior, okay? And it tells the dog that a treat is coming. So if you're telling the dog that a treat is coming, you want to make sure you're clicking during behaviors that you like or you want to happen more often. So um, again, with clicker training, you're clicking the good behavior, the behavior you like. And then after you click, you got about two to three seconds to give a treat, which is really cool. So you have to be fast on the reward. You're only gonna click when you're gonna give a treat. So once a behavior is learned and it's happening like 70 to 80% of the time, you would stop using the clicker and go to a random reward schedule. So basically that myth that if I use a clicker, it means that I have to use it forever is untrue. And you also don't always have to have it on you either because you can still train your dog without a clicker because you can just reward the behavior in a different way. And then when you have the clicker on you, you can click and use treats. So um, you can also click and pair it with a toy, um, but you wouldn't want to click and pair it with touch or click and pair it with praise. It would be click, treat, or click toy. Um, and you would do some clicker loading where you would spend time basically where you click and then give your dog a treat. And you just do that over and over and over again, a variety of times a day, different locations, et cetera. Um, and that teaches the dog to understand that noise means treats. Okay. So I'm wondering if I was punching everybody today because everybody popped off, they all bleed. <laughs> okay. Um, 
hopefully I'm being positive for you guys. If not, let me know because I'm happy to change. I want this to be fun and educational for you. Okay, so benefits of clicker training. It speeds up the learning process and it serves as a time gap between the behavior and the treat. So again, you got that two to three seconds after you click to get that food out. So if you're marking something, um, think about how fast you can mark it with the clicker versus if you get food out, it takes you a decent amount of time to reach in your treat pouch that's down here and get the treat out, right? So my hands here, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, it's gonna take you about three to four seconds on the click. It doesn't take any time at all. So I can mark that behavior in less than a second. So that's why it speeds up the learning process. It encourages your dog to figure things out and use their brain. So when you have a dog that's clicker trained for a while, they're gonna be like, oh, what's gonna make the click happen? They'll sit, they'll down, they'll touch the drawer, they'll close the door. Especially if you've done trick training, they might spin, they might lift up their paws. They're gonna try different things. So it actually encourages exercise of the brain, mental stimulation, very healthy. Um, it sounds the same for everyone. So if you have multiple people in your household, there's no way this is gonna sound any different. But if you use a verbal marker like yes, different people are gonna say it differently. They might say, yeah, they might say, yes, yes, yes. Um, or you might even have a different ways of saying it depending if you're stressed out, yes, or super excited, yes, versus yes. So that can be confusing then to understand that it's a marker if it's changing all the time. So with the clicker, it sounds the same. It also reaches the amygdala part of the brain. So that part of the brain um, is a great part to reach because it actually makes the response become involuntary. Like the dog knows, oh, I'm getting a treat without having to sit there and think about it. So we already talked about how it rewards behavior quickly. And you could also reward behavior at a distance. So if your dog's away from you and goes to their bed and you click that, so my dog could be clear across the room and I could ask him to go to place over there. And then I could click and then I could walk over there and give him the treat. Pretty cool, huh? So I can mark behavior that happens away from me, which is really, really fun. So, oh, okay. Dogs, um, that was for the in-person workshop. Dogs learn through consequences, right? So we have behavior and then the consequence. So I wanted you guys to kind of think a little bit with these examples. What is the dog learning? So your dog wants attention and jumps on you and then you pet the dog. Right? I needed to add that in there. What behavior got rewarded? Okay, so let's see what you guys write down. I'll go through um each of these and then we'll go back and see what people wrote your dog wants to walk forward and when he pulls on the leash you walk forward what behavior got rewarded your dog barks and wants attention and you tell your dog to be quiet what behavior got rewarded so for the first one the jumping got rewarded right because the dog jumped on you you pet him so that behavior got rewarded, right? If I walk forward when the dog's pulling on the leash, then I'm rewarding the leash pulling. And if the dog wants attention, I talk to him even by saying quiet when he barks and I'm rewarding the barking. Does that make sense? So you can even look at this. None of this was rewarded through treats, was it guys? None of it. <laughs> so reward-based training is a lot deeper than just food. You need to think about what your dog is wanting on a deeper level. And are you giving your dog what he wants when he's doing behavior that you like? Yes or no? And are you giving your dog what he wants when he's, when he's doing behavior that you do not like? And if the answer is yes to that, then you want to change that, right? So what behavior is your dog doing that you are rewarding and you do not want to reward? I'm really excited to read your comments and see what you guys write on that because I can help you um, through that as, you know, as you answer that question. So here we're going to look at some videos and I'm going to ask you what behavior is getting rewarded. And then I want you to type in the comments below what behavior you see is getting rewarded here. And we're going to go up to here. So it starts here. So what behavior got rewarded there, guys? The 
leash pulling, right? The dog was pulling on the leash and then the owner was running, All right? So now we're gonna get more leash pulling if she were to continually do that. Now she is a client of mine. So of course that changed and did not stay that way. So now look at this, what behavior is getting rewarded here? So we have a nice loose leash and the dog is walking forward. The owner is walking forward. So the loose leash is getting rewarded just by that forward movement. Now let's look at this one. What behavior is getting rewarded and what consequence happens when the dog pulls on the leash? So there, notice what behavior got rewarded there, guys. Dogs pulling, what was the consequence of the pulling? Pulling. for pulling what did you see there it's not changing direction so the dog pulled on the leash and it changed directions in the opposite way and then what behavior is getting rewarded the loose leash i walked forward when the leash was loose and then this one i added food also so there's two rewards that happen walking forward and the treats so yeah i mean you train it with just the forward movement and change directions and no treating. But adding in the treating does speed up that learning process. So let's look at this one. The dog likes to jump on visitors. What behavior is getting rewarded and what rewards were used? And I want you to really definitely pay attention to what rewards were used because there's more than one answer to that question actually. Okay, so what behavior is going to be rewarded and what rewards were used? Good girl, sit, sit. Good girl. Good girl. So we have a lot of rewards happen here. First of all, the behavior that was getting rewarded was the sitting, right? And then it got rewarded with a treat. And then in addition to that, there was praise and touching that happened, right? So we got praise. And jelly rub, tons of touching, right? Gee, I think that dog's probably gonna wanna do that again, right? That dog's more than likely going to want to sit a lot more than jumping because that behavior is getting rewarded. Can you see that? So this dog likes to jump on the gate when visitors come over. And in this video, we're practicing without a visitor first. So what is the, be what is the dog doing when the owner clicks? So notice what behavior the dog is doing when the click happens. Right. Um, and then that's the behavior that's being rewarded. So what behavior is getting rewarded here? And when is that click happening? So can you guys see what's happening when the dog is sitting? Try walking through the gate. How the criteria and a little bit harder. And at, because the click is happening for the sitting, that's the behavior that's getting rewarded. Sitting. And there he did a release word. So the dog got up with the release. 
So then the next video, what is the visitor doing when this dog jumps? Let's focus on that first. <clears throat> What do you say? Is the visitor getting attention for the jumping? No, the visitor's not giving attention, huh? And you see that she's turning her back. She's not even saying anything. She's quiet. Okay. There's not eye contact, nothing. And there's also the space in between the gate and her. So she even left some distance. So now let's look. What behavior is a dog doing when the owner clicks? Can you see that sitting is what's getting clicked? And if sitting is getting clicked, then that's the behavior that's getting rewarded, right? So notice when the dog jumps, nothing happens. We're not shocking the dog, hitting them, yelling at them. Nothing really happens. The tension and the rewards happen during the sitting. Keep so clicking. now in addition to the click and treat for this. Not now. The dog gets eye contact from the visitor too. So if we were to go back a little bit here, that's where she turns around. But here, the dog is sitting and the dog's also getting eye contact from the visitor. Did you ever think that attention, like eye contact is rewarding a behavior? It absolutely is. Right. So then the dog realizes okay. that when the jump happens, that Not eye now. contact and attention from the visitor goes away. <laughs> eye contact came back. Dog was going to get pet, and that got when the jumping happened. Eye contact is back. Now petting is happening. Or not in addition to the cleaning and food, so you could hypothetically do this without any food, but this dog's really excitable, so we wanted to train it faster. So then the cool thing is that we reward this so much that when this dog goes out, he doesn't even jump on the visitor. Watch this. Good. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, cool. We got someone that said something. No, when the comments happen, they are something, they are a little delayed sometimes. Great. Okay. So let's look at. the next video. So what is the consequence for jumping here? And we're going to move forward a little bit on this. And go to about there. Good. Yay. So this is okay, so what was the consequence for jumping that you guys see? Learn that they can jump. Okay, write it in the comments. And now I want you to um, look at what is the dog doing when I click? Jump on, can you yeah. write that in the comments below they are too. Test you so and see, okay, the first but... answer when I when the dog jumped on me is what? I'm turning. I didn't turn all the way around, but I turned sideways. I didn't say no off. I got boring. I didn't give eye contact. And then as soon as the dog had four on the ground or paws on the ground, I couldn't treat it. Learn that they can jump on command. 
So yeah. the reward was definitely food, but there also was a reward from me with giving attention to the dog for not jumping as well. Hi, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I would love for you to participate on the call today if you're willing. So on this one, I would love for you to comment and answer this question. What is the dog getting rewarded for doing here? Okay. What do you think the dog is getting rewarded for doing? The dog is getting rewarded for coming to the owner. So um, we're working on training come. So that's why the owner's running and eventually that gets faded out. Okay. So now I wanted to ask you personally, what do you do to reward behavior that you like with your dog? And I would love for you to answer that question. Um, I've had some people that, you know, tell me when their dog's barking outside, they call them inside and then they give them a treat. So the dog got rewarded for coming in, but also when they bark, they know they're going to get called in and get a treat. So then the barking can get rewarded, right? Hi, I'm glad you're here. So I would love for you to write, what do you do to reward behavior that you like with your dog? Okay. Um, so in the example I just gave, we definitely got the dog to come inside, so we like that, but then we also probably are unintentionally rewarding the barking. So what are some things that you do to reward behavior that you like? So another example is the dog's walking loosely on the leash and you walk forward, or the dog um, sits instead of jumps and you click and treat that. Um, I'm excited to read what you guys write. Because that'll help me like understand that I communicate to the point of understanding here. How do you stop behavior that you do not like with reward based training right so a lot of times we think we need to do that pain based type of stuff to stop behavior that we don't like. Well, actually, there is another way you can think about what your dog is wanting and is he or she getting what he wants when he does that behavior. And if he is getting what he wants when he's doing that behavior that you do not that you do not like, then he's going to continually do that behavior, right? So if the dog's getting what he wants when he's doing something that you don't want him to do, he's going to keep doing that behavior because he's getting what he wants. Does that make sense? So in order to change that, then you need to change the consequence that your dog is getting, and then you can change the behavior. So that's why pain-based methods work because the dog's no longer getting what he wants; he's getting hurt. Um, it doesn't feel good, so he stops. This whole call is about how to not do that. What can you do instead, right? So if the dog's pulling on the leash, you could not walk forward, right? And the dog realizes, oh, I don't, I don't get to keep walking when I pull on the leash, or the dog is jumping if I turn my back, and then I pet the dog when they're sitting. There, I changed it, right? Attention happened when I was sitting, but not when I was jumping. So let's look at this picture here. What do you think this puppy is wanting? And there's a lot of answers to this question, All right? So my mind completely goes to attention. And other people might be thinking, oh, the dog wants to be pet. That's just, that also is attention, but that's a completely valid answer. Or, hmm, maybe the dog is in pain because they're teething. So maybe the chewing of the hand is relieving some of the pain. So it could be pain relief. This is a puppy. So this dog could be overly tired and needing a nap. That could be another reason. He also might be communicating that he needs exercise and something to do. So there can be a lot of answers to this question. So when you actually are training from reward-based training, you're trying to be empathetic and compassionate and kind of get in your dog's head and ask that broader question, like, what is he getting from that behavior? And what are those needs, right? So 
I'm going to give you a human example. Hi, I'm so glad that you're here. I would love for you, if you're willing to answer this question, what do you think this puppy is wanting? So I would love to get to know you and help you today. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm going to give you an example that happened yesterday with my daughter, because I think human examples are really good. So my daughter's dad lives in another state, okay? And she was going to, she's going to, um, she was going to visit him yesterday, right? Get on the plane and go with him and stay, actually to stay in the hotel overnight and then fly on the plane today. So when I went to drop her off um, with her dad, she's so happy to see him. She hadn't seen him in almost a year and she started crying, right? So if I don't think about what she's wanting, then I could come from a pain-based type of method. Knock it off, stop crying, just go with your dad. Everything's going to be okay, right? Or start yelling or whatever, you know, hitting would be pretty brutal. But I think a lot of times we mostly like say things um, in the human realm that are pain-based. You know, it's not appropriate for you to cry. It's just, you know, you're just going on a trip with your dad. Shut up, right? So we kind of come at it from that that angle and we shut down the emotional response of the child to get them to comply. So when you're coming from a reward-based standpoint, you're actually listening to that emotion underneath. So underneath all of that is she's scared. You know, she hasn't gone to Idaho with her dad ever. And it's been a year since she saw him. So she was feeling a lot of fear. So I was like, okay, what, you know, what's going on here? What do you, you know, what do you need? And, you know, she needs to feel safe, right? That's the reward she needs in that moment is safety. So, you know, you might not want to use the word reward, but I like it because I think it keeps it simple. She wants the safety. That's what's underneath it all, right? And if she gets safety, she's going to go with her dad and get on the plane. It's really just that simple. Um. And for another kid, there might be a different need or want, but that's what her want was. So I can go underneath that and then figure out how can I meet that, right? So what we actually ended up doing is meeting that emotional need through tapping and breathing um, and shaking. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with EFT, emotional freedom technique, but we did a lot of tapping of releasing um, guilt or fear with safety and replacing it with safety and doing all you know these different tapping areas on the body. And then uh, we did some breath work and we did some shaking and then some affirmations once she felt more grounded in her body. So now that she felt safe, now her behavior is gonna change. Does that make sense to you guys? So it's actually pretty, it's pretty deep when you really get into it. Um, you know, when you look at this picture, I, I just thinking of it from an intention standpoint or just the dog wants to bite is one option, but we could go deeper than that. Is the dog tired? Is the dog hungry? Is the dog in pain, right? And then that changes our consequence that we're gonna give, which then in turn change the behavior. So I could give the dog something from the freezer that's cold to chew on, right? To help them out. So ways to stop an unwanted behavior in a positive way. So you can redirect your dog to perform a different behavior, okay? Um, you can put the behavior on command and you can stop the reward they are receiving for the undesirable behavior. And we're gonna go through each one of these. So here's an example of redirecting the, the behavior, okay? So this is getting the dog to go to its place or their bed and staying on there until they're released. So what behaviors can you redirect by training place? Or you could also think of it as training an alternate behavior, right? I'm curious to see what you guys comment on that because there's a lot of behaviors that you could redirect with this. So common ones that I have redirected is jumping. So um, especially, you know, if this is a dog that goes on picnics um, or, 
you know, you want to take out and about to coffee stores or coffee shops and sit outside or at restaurants, you're, you could redirect jumping, barking, and begging with going to the place, right? Dogs barking at something, redirect them to the bed. Dogs jumping on somebody, redirect them to the place, right? And eventually, if you do this properly, then the jumping doesn't happen first. You just get your dog to go to the bed and you stop the jumping altogether. Same thing with the barking and the begging. Um, okay, so another option is to put the behavior on command. So basically this is saying, look, you wanna do this, I'm gonna let you do it. But I have boundaries on when you can do it and when you cannot do it. So if I have a dog that's digging, then I might say, okay, you are allowed to dig in the kiddie pool with the dirt, but not in the rest of the yard. Or a dog that wants to herd something, you're allowed to herd the sheep. Or me, when I say a go around command, that's what I did with Seiki. Um, but no, you cannot herd when you're off the leash and we're hiking in the mountains up in Utah and we see somebody skiing, cross country skiing down um, the mountain or a biker, right? Because that could be dangerous. Um, so in this example, I want you to just wonder what behavior am I training this dog to do? So what behavior am I putting on command? So this is a behavior that we generally don't want the dog to do all the time, but I am allowing the dog to do it some of the time and I'm training the dog to learn that they can do it some of the time. So I'm gonna to skip to 217 here. Um, so a really good way to train it to be on command is by using a command called target. So target, you get your dog to touch their hand or your um, hand on command with their muzzle, target. So he's touching his muzzle to my hand, target. And then eventually I can pull my hand up a little high. So just think target. if you're watching this, what behavior do you think I'm training this dog to do? Good job. Target. So you start with your hand relatively low, unless your dog's gonna wanna, you know, jump when your hands all the way up here right away, that's fine. Give you a pretty good hint there. Target. The pogo, um, we've been really working on not jumping, so right now he's thinking, well, I'm allowed to jump. Yep. Target. There's the answer, right? Did you guys get it? Did you think, okay, I'm training the dog to jump? Um. Let's skip ahead so you can see how um, it starts getting higher over time. Now, it's a gradual process. Not every dog will pick up on it this quick. And the dog doesn't know exactly what I want him to do, so there's a little bit of waiting going on here. And then he jumps up. Very and nice. So my hands. So Seiki, <laughs> um, the last dog I had, um, he likes to jump a lot. He was a very active herding dog. So I put jumping on command. And I did it just like um, I'm showing you in this video. And so basically when he was allowed to jump, I'd put my arm out and I would say jump. And then he would jump up and touch his muzzle to my hand. And he thought it was the funnest thing ever. So I'm getting it out of the system. I'm allowing the dog to do it some of the time, but not all the time. It's when visitors come over, or on hiking on the trail, I don't want him jumping on random people or on, you know, people coming into the house. They could get hurt, et cetera, right? So there's a great example on putting the behavior on command. Hi, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Definitely um, comment as you're watching this so I can help you out. So stop the reward they are receiving for the undesirable behavior. So this is another way so we were just um, talking about, wrong way, so I can go back, different ways to stop an unwanted behavior the positive way, okay? Okay, so this works well for attention getting behavior. So you stop the reward they're receiving for the undesirable behavior. You can stop giving your dog attention when he wants attention and that's going to help stop jumping, it could lessen play, play biting and mouthing. Now remember, there's other reasons play biting and mouthing can be happening, but if it's attention getting, then removing that attention is going to 
lessen that behavior. And especially if you add the attention in there when the mouthing isn't happening, right? And you add the attention in here when the sitting's happening instead of the jumping, right? Um, attention barking, you know, don't talk to them when they're barking, remove that, pawing on you, begging for food, taking away the food when they're begging, right? Not looking at them when they're begging, not giving them attention when they're pawing at you. Is this making sense? Yes or no? I would love for you to comment so I know if it's making sense for you. How would you stop giving your dog attention for attention getting behaviors? So from what I just said, I would love for you to comment and let me know the answer to that question. Uh, and that'll let me know if I've communicated this well for you. So now it's time for you to journal. What behaviors will you change with reward-based training and how will you change them? So I would invite you to comment in the comments and let me know what behaviors will you change with reward-based training and how you'll change them. Um, if you'd rather not write in the comments and journal it down, but basically I want you to um, write it somewhere because that's gonna help it you know, come into fruition. It's going to get it in your long-term memory. It's gonna allow it to be more likely to happen. And if you write on a piece of paper, hang it up somewhere where you're gonna look at it regularly. And that's gonna help you have great um, follow through with applying it. So um, who wants to share what they wrote? So write it in the comments below if you do, cause I would love to read them and know um, what you wrote. Oh, I see someone popped on, hi. We, um, I would love for you to watch the replay cause we are at about the end, but if you want to um, comment on anything, um, please do. Cause I would love to know, um, actually let's just ask you guys this question since you're on here. What behaviors will you change with reward-based training and how will you change them? So I know you just popped on, but, um, I'm sure you might be thinking about this already. So write it in the comments so I can personally help you right now. All right. And then I have a question on what future dog training topics would you like to see covered? And I would love for you to let me know because I would definitely love to do some Facebook lives on them. And what other struggles are you having with your dog? So either one of those answers will help me know um, of some topics that you guys are wanting and maybe I'll do a Facebook live on it because I would love to be able to help you. All right, if you live in Ohio, um, cause they do help people out no matter where they live, um, you are gonna want to come to Burton because I have some free in-person classes. I just did one on kids and dog safety and I did this one in person yesterday. Um, so there's three more that you can come to. So get your dog to come the positive way is on 627 next week. Loose leash walking is on 76 and stopping puppy mouth puppy mouthing is on 713. So I believe the link I have in the comments below goes to register you to the get your dog to come the positive way, but you can always click on the programs on the Burton Library website. Um, and look for the ones that uh, you would like to sign up for. And then if you have kids and the dog um, for attending today, you will get 20% off this class. Just mention that you um, watch this, whatever you wanna call it, workshop, live, Facebook, um, you will get 20% off and you can attend this class for both your kid and your dog. It's four days in July. And again, in the comments below, um, there is a link to pop on and learn more about this class and to contact me. Okay, so if you are struggling with getting your dog to listen to you, we understand and we can help get your dog to listen to you in, in private dog training sessions as well. We can help you in person in Northeastern Ohio. We can also help you online through Zoom. And we've helped people all over the U.S. We can do it all over the world, but we help people in Oregon and Florida. Um, basically, we're going to be focusing on improving your relationship with your dog while teaching your dog to listen to you because we're using reward-based training. So we're doing it with a team effort. If that sounds awesome to you, then I would highly recommend that you set up a free phone chat with me for attending 
this um, Facebook Live today, you'll get 50% off a private session with me. Just mention this webinar or this uh, Facebook Live. And do you want to find out if we would be a good match and I can help you out? You can set up a free phone chat with me. Let's find out. You can go to this website to learn more about me, but there is a link um, that's pinned at the top in the comments below to set up a free phone chat with me. So that's a great next step to do. And I would love to spend some time with you on the phone getting to know you and your dog. So thank you for attending today for this Facebook Live. I will be on again uh, next Wednesday. Again, usually at 1.30, um, things can change um, with the time, but most of the time, I will be aiming for 1.30 this summer. I hope to see you guys again and have a great rest of your day. Bye.